Welcome back to Homeowner Talk. Joining us now is Nancy Ruth. Nancy is the president of Plaza San Miguel HOA in Las Vegas. Nancy will be talking to us today on the importance of collection policies. Nancy, thanks so much for being with us. Thanks for having me. Why don't you tell our viewers a little bit about your background and how in the world you got to be on the board of directors? <laughs> well, as far as homeowner associations are concerned, um, I've been on the board the better part of the 14 years Excuse me, that we've lived in our community. Um, in the business sense, uh, I've worked in both engineering and in management. And uh, part of my experience there, designing roads, um, overseeing people who maintain the roads, uh, just protecting the assets of the general public, that made me aware of how important it is to maintain the assets of the HOA that I lived in. And that's part of what drove me to be active in the board. 14 years, David. That's a long time. It's a long a lot time. Of service. That's a lot of service on that association. That's and no, she's not out for loans, so association is alone. <laughs> well, Nancy made a, an, uh, an interesting point. She said active, uh, active board members, I think, are very important. And, and uh, to, to be active and involved and having the background you do is very beneficial to the Homeowners Association. I, I want to ask you quickly, there's a new law, and I think we have a graphic on this uh, for regarding collection policies for homeowners associations. Maybe mm -hmm. you can comment on that and what your association is doing with respect to that. Well, um, as you folks know here, um, in October, um, NRS statute came into effect that, that uh, requires homeowner associations to have a written collection policy, and we have to distribute it annually to members. So our board of directors, um, at the first board meeting after that became in effect, we established a written collection policy, we agreed on it, and then we have sent it out to our homeowners. I think it's critical to note that, again, the process, the board of directors, this is a, so, this is a corporation, got together, your body, and you, you visited uh, about it, you came up with a policy, and then to give all the homeowners notice that mailed out to all the homeowners, and that, that's critical. The boards need to take action in their meetings and then make sure all the homeowners are aware of it. Um, when did your collection policy go into effect? The new one was just uh, in November. Okay. Because we meet quarterly, so it was the first um, time that we met. But I think it's important um, that all the viewers understand that collection po policy is not anything new. That's been part of our CCNRs. And I believe with most homeowner associations, it established when we have to pay and how often we have to pay. And that we can find, we as the board can find people for not following those collections. And now we're just um, bringing that to the forefront. We're clarifying it and putting it in a document where we call it out and we remind them every single year what their requirements are. To, to read what the statute is, you can go to our website, homeownertalktv.com. And I think what the law does, is it, it sort of exaggerates uh, this requirement to pay assessments and it sort of brings it to the front and re-reminds everybody, if you will, every year that they have to pay these assessments. I know some of our sister states um, have had collection policy requirements for a number of years, so I'm really pleased to see that the association, um, uh, that the, st the legislature, rather, finally came around and, and, and now requires that for every association. Another thing Nancy pointed out that I think is so important for our viewers is that it's a written policy. And again, as she pointed out, this isn't something new. You, you, you've been on the board for 14 years, and so I'm going to imagine that there's been delinquencies sporadically throughout that entire time. Is that correct? That, that's correct. And there's always the homeowner who has a delinquency, they're fined or they're sent to collections, and there's a big hullabaloo over it. And, you know, we, we want to be sure that everyone knows the rules. And when, every, when each person bought their home, the rules were, or the, in the CCNRs, the collection um, basic collection procedures right identify there the fact that we can send them to collections but now it's clear it's right there in front of them and if we give them out to every year people can't say I didn't know and in today's economy more more people are having to make a decision you know do I pay my assessment or do I not for for some reason or another and I think if they know there's consequences if they can see that there is a real obligation they have to pay those assessments it's not voluntary dues you know these are assessments they're required to pay the same as they're supposed to pay their mortgage and you know I me a personal issue that I have on this topic is that um, when you buy into a homeowner association we all have some sort of expectation of what our community is going to be like and when people are not paying those dues the homeowners association is responsible to pay our landscaper we have to pay the electricity to open and close the gate we have to pay to maintain the roads with things that we need to do and when people stop don't pay those assessments that's not just impacting you personally that's impacting your community and it really matters when you don't pay and the value again and the board has this responsibility to protect maintain and enhance value 
if the assessments are there, they can do that. If they're mm -hmm. not there, then it definitely hampers them. I know it's probably too soon to know. Uh, you said you mailed out the notice to all your homeowners. Have you had any feedback from your homeowners? Has there been any experience so far where the homeowners have responded or maybe have you noticed any change in collection or anything? I know it's been such a short period of time, maybe you have, don't have a track record yet on that. Well, no, we don't have experience in just this short time, but we have had a collection policy, albeit less formal. You know, it has existed. We have had very clear procedures what's going to happen when people are delinquent. and. Uh, in the past, when somebody falls behind, we always give them notice that they're falling behind, and then we give them another opportunity. And then we've always tried to communicate very well with our homeowners. And I think this just goes one step further. Yeah, that, that, that's great. Um, so uh, another thing I think that I find interesting, and I don't know if you can comment on this, is that we, we talk about the collection policy benefiting our homeowners because we get to put it in print and we mail it out to them, but I think it also benefits the board because now, it takes away some of the mystery here. Okay, where are we at in the process? Your thoughts, because if you've been on the board for 14 years, you've probably seen things ebb and flow or change over that time. I think the written policy can be a real asset to the board. Well, absolutely. And as a homeowner and as a board member, I really like having this collection policy very clear and right in front of everyone because then we follow those procedures for everybody. And I know as a homeowner that I'm not singling out you and treating you different than you. Everyone's being treated the same. And as a board member, I know that when I make a decision on how um, to handle a delinquent account, you know, as a board of recommendation I make, I know I'm being consistent too. And that's important because the law says that, well, again, it's talking in the context of rules, and this might not exactly fit that, but it says uniform enforcement under the same or similar circumstances requires the board to be somewhat consistent, uniform mm -hmm. in how it deals with people. It's so hard to remember what happened years ago. If you have Absolutely. a written policy, it's so much easier to follow. And that. you take right. away some of the, resp you almost sort of take away a little bit of the responsibility individually from the board. Because the board, if, I remember when I served on the board of my association, I would be approached by homeowners regularly asking for certain things. And if you could say, look, it has nothing to do with me as a board member. It all has to do with the policies that we have in place. It sort of makes your life as a board member probably a little bit easier because you can blame the written policy on it. And also you can say, you know, it has nothing to do with you personally as the homeowner. It's the, it's the policy. It's the policy. I have no choice. It, yeah. it does. It takes away some of the personal part of that. Mm -hmm. that, that that's very interesting how, how that would work. Um, so the policy's been in effect for a little while. Um, earlier uh, we had Debbie Kluska from Nevada Association Services on our program, and Debbie talked a little bit about um, payment agreements, and, uh, and I'm just wondering if your association has any experience with, uh, you know, working with homeowners that are delinquent and how they might, uh, what maybe some of the factors and things you take into consideration in trying to get payment agreements. Well, we absolutely do uh, look at payment agreements. You know, we, we're looking for compliance from our homeowners. We are not, we're not in the business of trying to make money on fines as our homeowner association. We want to we're a corporation, we're a nonprofit corporation as our homeowner association, and we want to be sure the money that comes in, um, that we have enough funds to operate our corporation. As I said before, we can pay those bills and things. And so we're not trying to make a profit off of people that fall behind, we just want them to, to do their best to comply. So if, if they can catch up on their dues or they can, you know, um, remedy the fact that they've fallen behind by making payments, that's wonderful. You know, we want to see an effort. We want to know that you're trying. Now, do you put some caps on that? Because that's kind of an interesting idea. I mean, what if someone calls you up and they said, look, I want to pay this off over three years? I mean, does the board set up any sort of uh, standards or um, requirements that this doesn't become a very long-term, low-interest loan? Because uh, <laughs> that can be a little um, bit uh, right. difficult at times. Right. Now, fortunately, you know, we've, we haven't had, we're, we're not a community that has had a rash of, of delinquencies. We have a probably, you know, less than 10% at any given time. We have a fairly low number, and or maybe 5%. And um, so fortunately, we haven't had a lot of that. And uh, we try to be reasonable as board members. And if people are making a reasonable effort to do um, what their responsibility as a homeowner, you know, in trying to catch up with their dues, uh, we'll work with them. If, if it seems that they're trying to take advantage of the system, you know, that's not something that's clearly identified in our collection policy. That's something that does come back to the judgment of the board, and we're going to say, you know, this doesn't seem reasonable.